Okay, so we are going to move on to our next section. Um, if you notice, we have our the, probably the more popular uh, primitives, basics right here, and then there's a more tab that has a whole kit and caboodle of other stuff. Some of it's sort of variations of some of the other stuff, uh, you know, that have been compiled over the years with uh, Lightwave, but uh, we'll go go through them because there's actually some some nifty stuff in here. Okay, um, let's uh, select the Platonic. Sorry, I'll read that properly. Play Platonic solid tool. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take off our grid just so we can see things. So that right there made a kind of like a three-sided pyramid. Okay, let's undo that. Let's go back. Let's hit our numeric button. Okay, and basically that platonic solid tool, uh, it has a whole bunch of different shapes um, inside of it. As you can see, there's a list of them. Some of them are just way too complicated <laughs> to pronounce. Okay, so so there's a lot of uh, pre-made stuff in case you ever need anything. Like this one's a this one's kind of weird, you know. Has polygons with five sides and polygons with three. Some really some, some weird Dungeons and Dragons dice kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, you can you can find different reasons and things to to do to use something like this. Um, they're not as popular as the typical ones, but like I said, there's a, a list of, like I said, there's a whole list of these different shapes and you, you know, you have all the same controls, the center sizing. Um, it doesn't seem to have the stuff like uh, sides. It seems to have pretty much all have the same control size and center. Okay. So we're going to, uh, Clear out of that. Okay, and this is an interesting one. A torus. It has a whole bunch of different um, things here. We got our parameters that you can type in section, size, radius, start angle, end angle, cross section. Okay, so let's just pop out. And see what it says. See what it shows. Okay, so basically, it makes like a donut shape. Okay, and you know, which is a a toyroid. <laughs> okay, so we'll undo that, and I'll just show you some of the parameters of it, just so you can get a an idea of what else it can actually physically do. Notice it says 360 degrees at end angle. Say you wanted a half a donut. We would just type in 180, okay, and there you go. So this could be something like, you know, this could be turned into something like some sort of handle or could be a, a number of, of different things, a reason why you would have a half a, half a donut shape. Now let's undo that again. Oops, and it leaves a... Uh, some stuff behind. Okay, let's do the toyroid again. Um, 180. Now let's change the radius to say maybe 0.25 meters. Oops. And try that. Okay, that created a result I was not expecting. Let's go un undo that. Um, radius. Let's try, let's go back to 
one meter. Whoops. Undo. Let's go cross section. Let's let's make these one hundred millimeters each. One hundred millimeters. One hundred millimeters. Okay, that was more what I was uh, the look I was going for. Okay. So the radius one sort of made it go strange. I was thinking the radius, uh, the radius of this, these sections here, but uh, I guess they're calling it cross section in the uh, <clears throat> in the menu. So the cross section actually decides the uh, whoops the actual uh, thickness of this donut style shape. So like I said, this could be like some sort of handle or tube or like I said, it could be it could be a multitude of things. But anyways, a pretty pretty handy feature. Something like this could also be done with um, the, the, the lathe uh, tool. You can like you can make shapes like this, but this is sort of like pre-combines tools. That's why I said a lot of this stuff is a combination of tools because uh, it's it's designed to speed up processes of, of creating shapes like this without having to actually build it yourself. Okay.